Welcome to What's Cooking. I'm Steve Eisenberg, a producer of the show. In this new show, we'll feature different chefs, each preparing original dishes. We'll start with an outdoor backyard cookout series featuring Chef Carrie Taylor. She'll show us how to make drinks, appetizers, cold soup, grilled pizza, and desserts, some really tasty dishes, delicious, fun, and easy to make. So without any further ado, let's see what's cooking. All right, Courtney, we're going to make some uh, fruit water if you wanted a refresh, refreshing beverage for your barbecue. Or I like to keep my fruit water in the refrigerator, too, and I pull it out whenever I'm thirsty, which gives you a little of extra vitamins, nice pretty color, and you get hydration as well. Before we do that, we're going to start by making really fancy pretty ice cubes. I've got some raspberries here. These happen to be frozen raspberries, but you could use fresh raspberries. I like the combination of raspberry, mint, lime, and lemon. But you could do peach. You could do any kind of water you'd like. Uh, I like the pretty colors. So I'm going to do about four raspberries in each of these ice cube compartments. Uh, and then I'm going to use mint. Now I like to put ice cubes with the particular food that we have in our, our fruits we have in our water. So I'm going to go ahead and use mint for some of my fancy ice cubes. And we have some lime and lemon in our uh, fruit water. So I'm going to go ahead and put lime and lemon in some of these ice cubes. See that? Yeah. I like that. Oh, should we do a couple more raspberries? Yeah, I like the raspberries. They're nice. pretty. And an extra mint and another lemon. So I have a nice tray here. Now, if I wanted to use juice, I could do that. I could use apples. That would be good in here. But I'm just going to use water because I like the clear water in, in the uh, ice cube trays so you can see the pretty fruits and the herbs in there. So I'm just basically filling this ice cube tray with some water. And I'm going to set this aside in the freezer. And after a day, Courtney's going to show you what you get. So then once you freeze it for a while, you see you get these nice, pretty ice cubes. And you can see the fresh fruit and the mint and everything in there. So I'm going to dump these into this bowl here. These are the fun ice cube trays where you can just kind of pop them out. You don't have to work too hard at it. Look how pretty those are. You can see, really see the the different colors and all the different fruits and herbs in there. I really like that look with all the different colors. Yeah. Okay, so would you do me a favor and then put those in our pitcher so we can get our, yeah. our fruit water ready? This takes very, very little time. I think that looks good. How about that? Yeah, that looks good. That's perfect. Would you do me a favor and put our nice limes and lemons in here? And then the raspberries. And just kind of spoon them gently in there. And we're going to get that nice color already. Look at that. Try to just have the whole thing. Why not? Now, this is not sweetened. But you could, in fact, add some sweetening. Or you could add syrup or honey. But I'm just going to add some water from the tap. You could use certainly wa bottled water. But I'm adding about two quarts of water. And look what you get. You get a really pretty mixture, and the longer you let it sit, in fact, it can sit for days or even a week. The longer you let it sit, the happier you are. Courtney, what about our taste, because it all marinates gets together. Can you put a couple of ice cubes in our glasses, and I'll show you. You can do the ice cubes right in the pitcher if you were serving it to a barbecue. If you had an individual glass, you can serve it this way. That looks perfect, Courtney. Now, can you pour a little bar water in? Don't be alarmed if you get a little of the fruit in. That's the good part. Look at that. That's really pretty with the nice ice cubes in there. And it'll stay cool just for your barbecue. Now, when I get my some of my servings out, I just add more water to it. So there you have it. Fruit water, healthy, low sugar or no sugar, and the beautiful.
Well, Courtney, one of my very favorite cocktails is a watermelon margarita, and we're going to do that right now. Uh, again, of course, you could make this non-alcoholic, but why bother? You're 21. <laughs> Let's have some fun. So I'm, I've actually taken a fresh watermelon. I've kind of very freeform chopped it. Uh, you can't put, obviously, the whole watermelon in here. This is about eight cups, Courtney. It's about half a watermelon. Seeds and all can kind of go in here. Um, the nice thing about this watermelon margarita is you get all of the pulp and all of the vitamins and you get all of the fiber, which is um, healthy. It's a healthy cocktail. <laughs> so think about all the health benefits you're getting from this cocktail. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fill my blender up with this watermelon. Um, you could certainly use a different melon. You could use uh, a cantaloupe or a honeydew, uh, whatever you'd like to use. Um, and we're not going to make this frozen um, because it actually wouldn't work very well. You wouldn't want to put uh, ice cubes in here. It would water this down. Um, if you had some watermelon left over from a party, you could, you know, after the party was over, you wanted a little cocktail, you can help yourself to some <laughs> watermelon margarita. You could certainly turn this into a daiquiri by using uh, rum uh, or, or vodka. Uh, you could have a little amaretto, but we're going to use tequila and we're going to use triple sec, which is an orange flavor of liqueur, and that is going to turn it right into a margarita. In fact, we have our pretty margarita glasses ready. Okay, so I am going to take my watermelon. I've filled up my blender. Um, the next thing I want to add is the juice of a lemon and the juice of a lime. Okay, and you want the sour flavor. A traditional margarita would have lime in it, so you definitely want to have that. But I like the lemon, it gives a little brighter flavor also. So we're going to drizzle some of the lime juice right in there. Look at that. Okay, good. And this is the um, orange flavored liqueur. The triple sec. The triple sec. Ooh, this is looking good already. <laughs> and this is tequila. I'm using a silver tequila. Uh, if you were you know, quite the aficionado, you could use a gold tequila or any type of tequila you want. Now, I'm not going to add my ice right now. Again, I'm going to put it on top of my blender. But before I do that, I'm going to add some agave syrup. I like my margaritas a little bit sweet. If you wanted it more alcoholic, you could go ahead and add some more of the triple sec, which is sweeter. But um, I'm not, I want my watermelon margarita a little bit lighter. It's summer and I'm having a barbecue. And if I want to function during my barbecue, I don't necessarily want to get myself really, really uh, full of alcohol. So I'm just making it lighter. Mm -hmm. You can make it as strong as you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to put this right on top of my blender, make a little bit of noise. It's going to somewhat decrease in volume, and then I could always add some more yeah. watermelon to that. Uh, so I'm going to turn this on real quickly, and it's going to basically turn it itself into juice very quickly. And Courtney's then going to show you how we're going to present our margarita. Yeah. All right, just a second, please, and we're going to get started here. done. Look at that. That looks pretty. Yes, it does. So. Okay. So I'm going to... Oh! <laughs> this is what you should not do. Now that our margarita is blended, we're going to show you how to present it nicely. Courtney's going to show you, number one, how to rim your glass. We're using sugar, but you can certainly use salt. Sugar is more popular these days than it used to be. You could use colored sugar. That would be pretty. Oh, that would be pretty. Yeah. So Courtney's going to show you how All to right, do so that. So I'm going to take the edge of the glass and just put a little lime juice on there. Just that. So that way it's, it's a little bit less messy than say like if you dipped it in water. And you just dip it into a glass, into a plateful of, of sugar. Well, that's pretty. And that's pretty. You know what I'd do? I'd just give it a little shake so the sugar doesn't go everywhere. That's excellent. There you go. Okay. And add some ice. Not a whole lot, but just a little. A little bit of ice. Keep it cool. Nice job, Court. Uh, you want to pour the... Uh, Go ahead. Oh, I'm doing it. You're <laughs> pouring. I've already made my mess. There you go. That looks lovely. Nice and frothy. So that's one. And then you can just take a nice little lime segment and uh, garnish it. There we go. Cheers.
Hey, Courtney, what's one of our favorite appetizers you can use any vegetable with that you have in your garden? Bruschetta is great. That's a good idea. Let's make some of that today. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to make a traditional bruschetta that you've seen before. It has tomatoes and basil and a little olive oil, but we're going to make something interesting also. We're going to saute some vegetables and make a saute bruschetta. Let's start with that one, shall we? Yeah. All right. So first, first thing I'm going to ask you to do, my trusty assistant, is to take a little, and I actually flavored, flavored it with some garlic, some olive oil. We're going to brush the olive oil onto the bread. We've sliced some French bread. You could use any kind of bread you had. Uh, focaccia bread works nice. And we're going to put that on a griddle right here. And you can certainly use an outside grill for that. Courtney, you're going to I'll get right to me? it. OK, thank you. All right, so Courtney's going to watch my bread for me. And I'm going to talk about um, how to chop some vegetables and saute some vegetables. I have some um, olive oil hot in a pan here, OK? And I am going to take my olive oil in a pan, and I'm going to add some red pepper to it. Red pepper is really pretty because it has some nice color to it. Okay, and I'm just going to chop a little bit for color for my mixture here, um, keeping my fingers curled under. And I just want squares because I do not want it too big. If you're making bruschetta, you do not want, want big slices. You want it bite-sized so you can put it right on your uh, bread. So I'm going to add this to my skillet. Okay, and I've already sauteed, sauteed some onions, and I've sauteed some mushrooms, which is a little untraditional for bruschetta. Very so, untraditional, okay. but I bet it's going to be yummy. Yeah, it's going to be good. Okay, and you want a little salt and pepper because vegetables um, need a little salt and pepper. And the, the spice I've used this time, you can use fresh thyme, which is what I've got, or you can use dried thyme. And I add that, and I'm just going to saute these. Now, I don't want my vegetables soft. I want them tender crisp. Um, I want my red pepper to be just crispy enough that it's going to have a crunch to it, but it's not going to be raw. So I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit in my pan. Okay. Courtney, what are some other vegetables you could use in bruschetta? Zucchini. You know what? Zucchini would be great. You know what else would be good? Fresh corn on the cob. You wouldn't even Ooh, need to cook it. a corn one, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a nice one, too. So whatever you've got grown in your garden, you can use. This is mostly done, but we're going to heat this up. It's kind of nice to have it hot. The only thing, Courtney, is if you wanted this to be cold, you could definitely be, have it cold. Yeah. It doesn't have to be hot. So if you were going to make the bruschetta early, you would certainly get your bread. You can actually get your bread grilled early, and the bread doesn't have to be hot. But if you wanted to... Heat it in an oven, you could get it hot right away, and it shouldn't take more than two minutes. And then you can have your toppings warm and ready to go. If you want it all cold, everything could be pre done. You just pull it out and put it on your platter. We have right. a really pretty serving platter. You can hear that sizzle, that's that red pepper cooking. I really like the color of the red pepper in here. You could add some um, basil. May I have a few sprigs of that basil? Yes. I think that'd be pretty in here. We've got a lot of fresh basil from our garden this yeah, year. Yeah, we so. did. We just pulled it right out. So I'm going to add a little bit of a basil. You could add parsley. You can add anything you want. You wouldn't want to put the bruschetta on the bread if you're serving it um, until right before you're serving it, if you were just having a sit down. Or you can, for a buffet, you can just put it out like we're going to. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to switch places a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to make their traditional tomato bruschetta. Um, so... Um, I'm going to use some fresh basil, again, like we had from our garden. i give you a couple of those. We're going to save a couple for the garnish. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to chiffonade some basil. I'm going to take my basil. I'm going to roll it into what I would like to call a, I don't know, a cigar shape, for lack of a better term, a roll, I guess. And sometimes the leaves are small, so you have to gather them. And basically, I'm going to slice it into ribbons, which makes a really pretty presentation for your tomatoes. Tomato and basil go naturally together, but if you had sage or you had rosemary, you could certainly use that, couldn't you? Yeah. What other herbs do we have? We have some mint. You could do mint if you'd like. Basil has a bit of a licorice flavor, and it's traditional, but you could do any herb you had. Right? Yeah. Now, I had nicely had some tomatoes chopped for me by a lovely lady here today, and I am going to go ahead and put my basil right in here. Now, for the tomato and basil, obviously the natural thing you'd want to put in here is garlic. I don't want to have a ton of garlic. I'm just going to smash my garlic. I just want a teeny bit because I don't want, I do want the flavor, but I do not want something my guests to have a big bite of garlic. Okay, so I'm going to put a teeny bit, just that much, and I'm going to dice it tiny. Okay, and then once I dice it, I'm just going to re-smash it so it just gets a little smaller. 
How's our bread looking there, sweetie? Looking good. Okay. Look. Okay, good. You want that golden brown, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic, and I'm going to add some salt and pepper. I want about a teaspoon of salt. Does that look like a teaspoon to you? Mm -hmm. And just a shake of pepper. Okay, and if you wanted it spicy, you can certainly add some um, red pepper, crushed red nice. peppers, yep, or even jalapeno. Hmm. Yeah, you can do that. You could even do a Mexican type if you wanted to do like a, you know, like Ooh, a like chipotle. A salsa would be nice. Oh, yeah. If you had leftover salsa or any sort of relish you had, that would be nice in here. Okay, so basically I, all I need, I want the tomato and basil flavors to come through. I've got this mixed up. Okay, and the last thing I want to add is a little olive oil to my mixture. It gives it a sheen, keeps it together. Now, when you add and you add water, uh, salt to vegetables, Courtney, what happens? Do you remember? Uh, the water comes out. Yes. So we're going to get these to be a little watery. So when I'm serving this, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm really careful not to put too much water in my serving bowl because I do not want my bread to get soggy. Right. Yeah. And how's that bread coming? Okay, that's all right. We can wait. Now, if you had an outdoor grill, you could definitely do it on an outdoor grill, and it would work quickly. But the indoor work grill works, too. And it doesn't have to be too crispy. Um, so what I'm going to do then, I'm going to go ahead and put my two toppings in my really pretty bowls. Okay? And again, I'm not going to, I'm going to be careful not to get any of that juice in the bottom, because I don't want my bread to get soggy. Okay? So I'm just going to put a little of this in here. Look how pretty that looks. It's all ready to go. That looks great. Okay, and I'm going to take some of my vegetable filling. Oh, we're getting some browning here. Sorry, moving over here. Right. And we're going to go ahead and put some of our other vegetable filling in here with the mushrooms and the onions and the peppers. That's starting to look pretty good, too. It smells awfully good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. The basil, you can really smell. Yeah, absolutely. My favorites. I like it. Okay. And you know what, then, then if you had any of this left over, you could definitely use it in some pasta sauce or whatever you had. Oh yeah, it's that kind of, over top of pasta would be delicious. Yeah, or anything you had. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to go ahead and take this, excuse me, behind Courtney, and I'm going to go ahead and garnish this with a little of that basil, give it that green color. Okay, and Courtney, do you think those some of those breads are ready that we can put those in here? Oh yeah, I bet a few of them are ready. Okay, mostly you want it crunchy, huh? Yes, crunchy is good. There you go. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is a little Parmesan cheese. This is freshly grated right on top of both. A summer feast for chef. <laughs> Today we're going to make zucchini fritters. What do you do with all the zucchini that we have in our garden? You make fritters. I guess so. <laughs> if you're going to have a barbecue, a zucchini fritter is a great option. You can make them ahead of time. You can make them small, and they're a nice hors d'oeuvre. You can serve them hot or cold with a little garnish, and they're pretty easy to make, and they use up all the ingredients that are fresh this time of year in your garden. So should we start? Yeah, of okay. course. All right, so what I've done already I've done some things already. As I have a grated a zucchini and I've not peeled it or anything, and I placed it in a bowl. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add some other ingredients. Now, if you have fresh corn on the cob, which is coming up, or um, if you have it already, I'm going to add some corn on the cob. And you know what, Courtney, you could add any, any other vegetables you wanted in here. Right. Right. So a fritter is basically a fried um, pancake, or it, it's almost like a, a donut dough, but. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a vegetable fritter rather than a you know, pancake fritter with, um, with syrup. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some salt. And you've got salt and pepper pre-measured. Courtney, help me out. Mm -hmm. And we've got salt and pepper pre-measured. And then we're going to add some chives, which is, again, something you had from your garden. You can use green onions or whatever you've got floating around. We're going to use some fresh basil. Now, I have a lot of fresh basil in my garden. I like to tear my basil. But you can cut it, tearing basil. I'd like to see my basil in my fritter. I'd like to see that green. It gives it a nice color. 
so I like big pieces. Now, Courtney, you want to help me and do an egg? Yeah. Why don't you talk about how you do an egg the right well, way? Well, so you do it in a bowl first because if you make a mistake, you don't want to ruin your whole batter. So I'm just going to crack this egg in here. And there's no red spots or blood spots or anything, so Okay, good. let's put that in there. I'm just going to wash my hands. Okay, I think that's a good idea of washing your hands if you're touching raw egg is something important. Um, next thing we're going to do is add a half a cup of flour, and that's going to help bind the ingredients. Now, the important thing is shredded cheddar cheese. You like cheddar cheese. It's your favorite. Yeah, it makes it gooey mm -hmm. when you t take a bite into it. And we're going to use a little baking powder. It's not going to puff up high, but it's going to add a little lightness to the batter, so you really want that. I've got a skillet here, um, and I've got some extra light olive oil in it. It's an olive oil that's not going to burn as much as an extra virgin and yet it'll give you the nice flavor and the health benefits. The other thing I have ready is I have a, pa a plate and I've got some paper towels because these are going to be a little bit oily when they come off the um, when they come off the skillet so we're going to put them on the paper towels to drain and to present this then I've got a little bit of sour cream with a little chives in it and a wedge of lemon. Um, again so we're going to get these done we're going to fry them and then I can serve them hot or cold. Courtney can I'll you mix that up? That's yeah. a good idea. We'll mix that up. Now what we want to do is we want to add some milk to this, but we don't want it too liquidy. So the milk, um, the milk amount is a little iffy. We're going to start with a quarter cup, which is about half of what we have here, Courtney. Okay. And what we want to do is we want it to bind, but we don't want it to be liquidy. How's that look? So what, is, what should it look like, Mom? Um, it should be soft looking and it should be floury, but it should not be look like pancake batter. Okay, so it should bind together and it should stick together. Yeah, How's it I looking? think we need a little more milk. Yeah. Okay, we'll do a little bit more milk. We'll do another two tablespoons. How's that looking? Looking better. All right, that looks good. Depends on the uh, water content of your zucchini also. That looks perfect, Courtney. That looks really good. Good, yeah. Uh, I, right. yeah. I want to make small zucchini fritters. Um, so if I'm going to do that, I want to use a bit of a small... Uh, hand, but if I wanted to make a great big zucchini fritter, I could put this whole spoon in there. I'm just going to make a few small ones. I don't know if you can see this batter, but it's sticky, but yet it's not liquidy, and that's what you want. You see that nice, pretty green color. That's what you want to have. So I'm going to step over here. Now my, I'm going to turn my skillet up a little bit because what I want to do is I do not want it to, to burn, but I want it to sizzle, right? Yeah. Don't want to pop it at you. It starts to pop at you. You just turn it down. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this batter in here. And the more important thing is you do not want to touch it until it's solid. If you touch it before it's solid, then the zucchini fritter is going to mush and it's going to turn into, you know, it's going to fall apart. So you can see how I'm doing kind of small ones. And I'm giving myself enough room that I want them to be able to be flipped easily. I'm just going to leave this go. What I want these to do, and this is just perfect, the heat I have here, I want it to solidify on the bottom, okay? And you'll be able to tell once you see it start to dry, uh, to dry up on the edge. You can see it's sizzling just perfectly, and if it were too hot, it would be smoking. Uh, and if it weren't not hot enough, it would not be sizzling like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about other, other f vegetables you could put in here, Courtney. What other things could you put in here that carrots. you could use carrots? You could do anything with red peppers, carrots, other th broccoli. You could broccoli, use, that would be nice. You could do a broccoli fritter. And the cheese kind of gives it a nice edge. Um, so I'm going to turn the stove up a little bit more because I want these to brown. I want a golden brown, but I do not want them to burn. Right. Right? Okay. So um, I'm going to let these solidify. Now I can start to see some browning on the edges here. Look at that. I don't know if the camera can see that, but what I'm about to do is I'm about ready to turn this one. And I can see some browning. Can you see the browning on the edges there? I can, yeah. Okay. Really nice. So I'm going to turn this, and you can see the golden brown color that you have there. And I can just smell this. I wish everyone could smell good. this. It does smell good. Okay. Now I can see on the other side. Can you see the brown there? I'm able to peek I here. Can see it, yeah. All right. So I'm going to take these fritters. Oh, it's important that you don't get burned with hot oil. So if it starts to pop at you, just take it off the stove, right? And I'm going to take my plate, and I'm going to put my fritter right on the paper plate. Look how pretty that looks. Looks good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Looks good enough to eat. Now, if I wanted to reheat this later, I could take my fritter, okay? 
and then I could just put it in the refrigerator and then just reheat it in the oven later. Look at that. That was look really nice. Oh, you get a piece of basil right there. Mm, nice. I like the big pieces of basil. Yeah. Yeah. I like my zucchini fritters, Courtney, with a little bit of a lime or a lemon wedge, mm -hmm. but not everybody would like that. I, I made a little bit of a sour cream dressing with some chives, and I like the chives because it shows kind of what's in the food. Yeah. Okay. So if you'll yeah. excuse our fingers, I'm just going to put these on the, the platter. Now, these are hot, but if you wanted to serve them cold, you certainly could. Okay. And see how pretty those are? You have all that nice, nice color. Okay. I'm going to serve four. Two for you, two for me. And then I'm going to dab my sour cream right on top. Look at that. Looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? And you can just make a whole platter for these. And you know, you can leave the sour cream off, or you could even use yogurt to be a little healthy. And that's a zucchini fritter. You can make it ahead and have for your barbecue.